I started doing this one thing on every shoot I go to, and it's massively improved the look of my videos. If you're not shooting a color chart and a gray card, I'm about to give you three reasons why you should on all your videos. If you're not familiar with a color chart and a gray card, they're basically reference points for how to get accurate color balance and proper exposure in the color correction pipeline. Today, we're gonna to be loading a chart into DaVinci Resolve and going over three ways how to leverage a tool like this to give you the best foundation for your color grade. Starting with... In DaVinci Resolve, I already have my output displaying Rec. 709 Gamma 2.2. There's a few ways to do this. The fastest method I use is a light I made that turns the image to false colors. And I want that my gray turns to the green color, which is more or less 40 IRE. I'm going to reference the gray card here to get middle gray using the global exposure dial in the HDR tab. Without using my false colors, I can display the qualifier focus on the waveform to quickly identify where the gray card is on the scope. 40 IRE lands at around this line here. I did a bunch of research about 18% gray and its relationship to IRE levels, and the consensus was that more or less 40 IRE is where you want it to be. So don't sweat it, just play around in that range and see what looks best for your footage. What's really great about this is when I want to go make a contrast curve. I now know that in my shot, this is middle gray-ish, so I can anchor this point and add contrast without affecting the midtones too much. On our white balance node, we're going to use the gray card again. What we want from this gray card is that each of the RGB values match. To check the RGB values on the card in your shot, select the qualifier tool and then right click on the video preview window. Select show picker RGB value. Now we can see what the exact values of the card are when we qualify over it. With this information, we're going to use the primary offset wheel. On my gray card is too much red and too little blue. So if I zoom in on my gray card, I can now reference it better on my RGB waveform. Using the display qualifier focus setting on the scopes, I can quickly identify it. We want each of the RGB values to overlap on the waveform, just like this. So basically, we're just gonna move the R, G, and B sliders up and down until they overlap on the waveform. To speed this process up for myself, I've made a LUT that highlights neutral colors, in this case as green. So now I can just move around the offset until I get most of the gray card highlighted and I'm done. On the chip chart I have here are a few swatches to represent skin tones. I used to balance my skin tones to actual skin using the skin tone indicator line on the vector scope, but I realized I could get better results by actually balancing skin tones to the chart. And that's because skin isn't perfect. There's blood coursing through it. It gets damaged by the sun or people wear makeup. And so when you balance to the chart, it makes those little nuances come alive in the subject and makes your skins look more natural. Okay, we could do this either as a primary adjustment, changing the offset to favor skin balance, or as a secondary adjustment in the hue versus hue curve. I'm going to do this as a secondary in this example. Just like the previous corrections, I've also made a LUT that will visualize skin tones for me. Here, skin will appear as blue while also highlighting green and magenta variation. I can quickly qualify the most offending swatch and make the adjustment. Now, if you look, my swatches are more or less perfectly skin tone, but my face still has magenta in it. I have very pale complexion and naturally look kind of pink, so this looks about right to me. Without the LUT, I'm going to zoom in on my chart and on a node at the end of my graph, make a window around the skin tone swatches and highlight them by pressing Shift H. Now on my vector scope, I can see that the swatch that correlates to my skin is leaning too much magenta. So I'll go back to my secondary node, qualify this swatch and move the curve down to add green. My shot doesn't require any huge corrections, so it's really subtle what's happening here. There's more you could do to take advantage of a tool like this, and I'm gonna be making another video exploring what those methods are, as well as some other cinematography and color grading tips, so if you wanna see more content like this, consider subscribing.